When you are programming, usually there are many ways to perform a certain task. In this video, I'll show you to achieve the same thing using a loop or with a recursive function. Are you ready? Let's go! Let's say that you want to send this string over a network. But our network can only handle 4 bytes at once. The string is 10 bytes long and we need to chop it up in 3 packets. Let's first do this using a for loop in Python. We start by creating the message. I'll loop through the characters in the message and print them. Let me execute the code. Now I want to convert this message to a list of packages that are 4 bytes long. I'll create an empty list for the packages. I'll create a buffer that holds up to 4 bytes. I'll fill the buffer with characters from the message. When the buffer has 4 characters, it is added to the packages list and the buffer is cleared. After looping through the message, we check if the buffer contains bytes. If so, we add the buffer to the list of packages. Finally, I print the list of packages. Let's execute the code. The result is a list of packages with up to 4 bytes each. You can see that we achieved this result with a for loop. Now we rewrite this code with a recursive function. I delete everything except for the message. The first thing I do is create a function that takes a message and returns an empty list. I call the function and print the result. This code is not finished of course, but a good starting point. Let me execute the code. Now we implement the create packages function correctly. A recursive function calls itself, but that is not the whole story. Recursive functions have two cases, a recursive case that calls itself and a base case. The base case breaks the recursive chain. The first thing you need to think of is when this function stops calling itself. The answer is when the message has no characters left. In other words, when it is empty. But why would the message be empty? This will be clear in a moment. Let's write the base case first. If the message is empty, return an empty list. Now we write the recursive case. It takes 4 bytes from the message and puts it in a list. What would happen if we call the, co the function? Let me execute it. We get a list with the first package. And now comes the magic of recursive functions. We not only return a package, we also return our function. And the argument is the remaining message. That means we chop off the first 4 bytes. Let me execute the code again. The function keeps calling itself as long as there are bytes available. Finally, the message is depleted and the base case will return an empty list. Although it looks like the base case happened at the end, it is the first time the function returns. From this point, all the packages will be added to this empty list. Even if this code is just a few lines, I realize there is a lot going on here. If you want to figure out in what order the cases return their values, put some print statements in the code. You have seen the difference between a loop and a recursive function. I hope it helps.